Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the North American Pro League. My name is Hi-Rez Bart. His name is Dry Bear, and we are live from Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm wearing a fleshy, fleshy jacket today as I shimmy for you. And we will be moving on to game number one today, which is going to be Snipe versus Team Dignitas. Oh, boy. This is a matchup of matchups, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. We got Dignitas, who had a very slow and grueling win over Cogred earlier this week. And, mm -hmm. of course, Snipe had a very rough game yesterday. So coming off that loss yesterday, it's going to be hard for Snipe to kind of recover cover and see if they can go against Team Dinitas. Again, Team Dinitas looking to keep their momentum going and see if they can actually start to pick it up. Got it. You got to join me down here for the wiggle. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, so, here's the thing. Snipe and Dignitas, long time have these teams been playing each other. Of course, Shing used to be on Snipe, uh, but still the core of that team is there. That's right. And they have a lot of experience playing against Team Dignitas. And we saw Dignitas find their first win, find some momentum using the strategy where Lassus would leech off of the mid lane right. and get himself ahead. However, for a long time standing, the rule of thumb has been, rule of thumb, blast Lassus, right. get him out of the That's game, right. yep. and then move on. Right? As yep. long as he's out, yep. you're fine. That's true. That's very true. I mean, Lassus really does scale up very quickly early on, right? And that's what we saw in the match on Tuesday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, is that Lassus got really far ahead, and mm -hmm. got to the point where he was just jumping and killing off Divios, uh, finding Boo somewhere. And it just was really difficult for them to kind of deal with that kind of pressure, uh, and it just started to get hotter and hotter in the room. And the point is, with, you have to make sure that Lass gets shut down, right? Because you have this, this mid laner, Na, who is, is still getting acclimated to competitive play. He's still trying to figure out how he fits into a competitive match, and mm -hmm. how to react to the rotations, ward the, the lane, and really kind of keep his momentum going. So, you know, can you actually shut down Lassus in the right way to make things matter. Yeah, you know, Lassus, on that Hun bot, some of those plays he was making, I mean, the thing about Hun bots and, and, and getting that kind of god or getting a god like Loki is your right. ability to re-maneuver in team fights. And Lassus has been really good at that. He's been in, taking, getting himself to the back lines after activating his sure. monkey and being able to port back out while using the ultimate to disrupt team fights and has been very, very successful to date playing those style of carries. Now, Bassett also kind of fits in that role as well, but we, we haven't seen him really branch out outside of that stuff. Right. And and we haven't seen his Thanatos be very successful either. We'll see no. how it all does go down, ladies and gentlemen, as we are in game now with Team Solo Mid versus Exposed Secrets. Lying to you, it is actually Dignitas and Snipe. Well, there you go. So uh, on, the, on the screen, of course, it's going to be Team Dignitas versus the one the only Snipe. And we're getting ready to go here. First pick, first ban will go to Team Dignitas. And, of course, second pick will go to Snipe. Snipe. Probably looking to take away a lot of jungle picks here. New Wah banned away, of course. And it seems to be like that's kind of Jerby's crutch, right? He just plays a lot of New Wah, ults as many times as he can, and helps out the team fights, which has not been working very well for Snipe at all. He gets the uh, Girdle of Inner Power, scales it up as best he can, and of course looks for that Girdle into ultimate, hope the team fight goes well, but that just isn't a, a winning strategy so far. Uh, or maybe they've kind of adjusted to see how it's going to work out for them going into this. Uh, Freya's going to get banned away by Dinitas, and of course Snipe has Ra gone here, uh, shut at Na in general. Uh, Crossway, of course, getting rid of that uh, Frey going to be going towards Weekend, but Weekend does love Nemesis, so I'm interested to see does why indeed, they're yeah. going to start to ban through a lot of these interesting characters. Well, it comes down to his snipe going to ban Loki, it seems like here. They can keep that out of Lassus' hands. Uh, he's been just, like we are kind of saying, with this Loki, a lot of players actually have been adopting the style of playstyle, actually, as uh, Dignitas, notably Sirket, left out of the ban list here. They're going to go ahead and ban out Sirket. And, uh, and, oh, I'm sorry, they're going to go ahead and pick Sirket while Dignitas actually was not banned. That's right. Yeah, well, Sir Cat's still available. First pick, actually, to Dinitas. Surprisingly enough, we'll see if that actually goes through and looks at something else going there. But, uh, you know, Vulcan's still available. Could go into Na. You know, that first pick can make a big, big difference there. Um, they're going to be looking at the right side and actually kind of scaling up a little bit more. Loki Band, of course, might be going into something more like a Nemesis in the jungle. We do have Geb hovered on here and see if we actually go for that one. And on this one, we're looking to also pick up a Chalk, actually, for Snipe. So Chalk and Geb going to be their first two selections. Chalk, it seems a little early for Chalk. I mean, we haven't seen him favor that highly. Granted, he is a very, very... Between these two teams, I feel like maybe he's a commodity, but generally overall, Chalk not a, uh, a high pick level of commodity here. Uh, over back on the side of Dignitas, uh, well, Geb out of the pool, so Athena likely to be a follow-up pick. We see them taking a look at her as well. And will they pick up their Hunter here, or will they elect to go for their mid laner, Al Guang, right. notably available, as is, uh, well, Raw Band out being gnaw, but uh, you know, you would think that he needs another one of those passive style support capable mid laners. Yeah, I mean, you need a little bit more utility in involved with the kit. You can't just go for a hard mage. It doesn't seem mm -hmm. to be working too well for them. So we'll see what they decide to go with. Uh, we do have Apollo locked in. Of course, it's going to be going to Zapman. Uh, hovering right now is going to be Athena in response to the Geb. Looks like they will be locking this in. Uh, and of course, with Sir Cat picked, this means it will be a support Athena across the way. They're going to instant pick Rom here without even a second thought or. Uh, decision in their own mind. They know they want to give it to Ally, and they know that he's going to do well with it. Yeah, absolutely. Coming back 
the side of Snipe with their final ban here. And looking at the, uh, well, a, a notably no mid laner or soul laner for Team Dignitas. And Zhang Kuei still on the board going through the first rounds of picking like this is really, really unorthodox. And Snipe is going to ban out Osiris. So not necessarily expecting maybe that circuit in the jungle or perhaps expecting Osiris to be a solo lane pickup for Team Dignitas. Possibly. Um, of course, you're going to see a Mercury band away here across the way, uh, Osiris band away as well. Giannis is still available for whatever reason. It seems to be like he's going to be picking up the late stage of the game. Jean Kui is still available. Um, Aphrodite is still available. Uh, looking to see the board. They can pick up Giannis on the side of Snipe. Two picks now for Dinitas. They've got their Hunter. They've got their uh, jungle. They've got their support. Now they just need a strong mid and solo. Again, Aphrodite is still available. Jean Kui is still available. They might even just pick both and lock them in here. Looks yeah, like Aphrodite would be really tough to deal with here. The easy one. Um, is there going to be a Jean Kui? Is the question? No, it's going to actually be Ao Guang. Well, the big question here is, can Xing play anything but Chalk? That's a good question. As you were saying earlier, I mean, Chalk really not a high value pick in no. any other. Well, only in North America has he picked up really at all in, in recent memory. And yeah. and and here, I mean, in this matchup is the only reason you're going to see him going in the first two rounds of picking. So, Chalk, I mean, it, can he perform really that well for this team? They have Rom and Chalk as their core physical damage right now. Right. Still a jungler ready to go the way of Snipe, but can they really afford to go a physical jungler here with Freya banned out? What other options do they have? Uh, it's rough, right? I right, mean, they don't really yeah. have much but physical to select. They go for some of the off junglers like Poseidon, um, you know, even Ogden no, can jungle occasionally. But, you know, they got to go for the top tier pick. They're going for Nemesis here. It's going to be a lot of physical here. Actually, four physical damage dealers, four snipe. But I like the choice, right? They know that Shing has been struggling to make this whole lane work. Mm -hmm. He finally did it on Wednesday with Chalk. And he even tweeted out, guys, I'm really happy with the performance chalk today. <laughs> finally got my Chalk, Chalk yeah. every game, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then uh, Snipe just saw that and was like, okay, we're going to take Chalk. Now, they got him second. It wasn't that bad, you know that good of a pick early on, but realistically, just hey, we're gonna ban some good characters, shut down Nah, shut down Last, make sure Loki doesn't get picked, make sure Rod doesn't get picked, steal away Chalk, kick can play Chalk, it's fine. Yeah, Dignitas maybe not as uh, it doesn't seem like either Snipe's a harder team to ban out against, or they just don't feel like any gods are particularly powerful in anyone's hands here. With very typical bans in the Nuwa, the Freya, and the Mercury, um, where on the other side, Snipe basically banned out. A, la a god for Lassus. They banned out a god for Gnaw that they actually were successful with. And then they kind of banned it aside, which was a little more of that swing pick, uh, or perhaps taking that away from Shing right. and the Soul Lane as well. Eh, kind of similar to the Chalk. Granted, not as much sustain, but still that physical bruiser style. Yeah. Well, looking at this right now, there's going to be a lot of bruiser action going on, especially with Chalk across the way. Uh, not so much, though. You're going to have Aphrodite, of course, very, very tanky, uh, especially towards Lake like you were mentioning. I mean, you get that point, right, where Afro is just out of control. You can't do anything about her. And we talked about this during the EU SPL, the fact that a lot of times it's just, it's not that Aphrodite is uncounterable. It's just, I don't want to deal with that. I mean, it's right, really hard to go. Right, exactly. The ultimate immunity, you have the stun, you have the slow knockback, you have the long range uh, AoE damage. Then you are also protecting people against big burst ultimates. I mean, if she's attached to Al Guang, you try to jump on them, she's going to shield them up. Um, plus, they have a decent amount of CC here. They have the Madness from Sirket. They've got the good slow from Al Guang. Athena's got the taunt. And of course, the, the uh, ungodly amount of CC that Apollo has. He has, what, two knockups, a slow, a movement speed increase, and an Apollo. a protections increase. Apollo, you know, sometimes we talk about gods having kind of like old school smite designs. Well, Apollo's from the old school period where it was, let's just stack everything on everybody because it's fun. And right. uh, Apollo, very fun to play, but also, eh, got, got a few more tools than the rest of the rest of the cast right now. Yep. That's it. <laughs> no, only on her really even rivals him for CC, and yep. but he doesn't have, you know, the amazing, global mobility. He also can't fly. Yeah. That's kind of flying is pretty way. good. Flying is actually very good. Surprisingly, we didn't think it would be, but apparently flying across the map is a really well, good Well, that's like that's what Apollo does, right? Like Apollo's like this like cheeky style of carry where it's like, "Oh, you're going to fight me? No, you're not because I'm going to measure you and then I'm going to knock you up and then I'm going to slow you, then I'm going to go faster." And then he has the global mobility where he can just spread the cheekiness around the map. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be a little bit too much there. I mean, you see him kind of go up in the air, land right on top, uh, get a good AoE damage and splash and then knock it up, of course, but it's really hard to be able to kind of do that. And Apollo really works very well in yeah. that aspect in the way that he can control the zone, scale well in the late game. He's got a good team fight comp. He also is very difficult to gank so you can't shut him down early, so that's why he's so highly valued by a lot of teams, and of course that's why Apollo was picked in the first picking stage here yeah. for Dintos over uh, Snipe. And also on to Zapman. Wanted. I mean, Zap Zapman yeah. and Apollo are in a lot of ways synonymous, um, and, and here we've seen him be very, very, very potent for this team. Uh, can they keep it together, though? That's the question. They're going to bring it in here. So, uh, if, you know, about 30 seconds before we get into the match here, getting ready to hop in. So uh, let us know your predictions in chat at home. What are you looking to see here out of this match? Do you think Dick is going to get a second win for the week? Uh, their first win was on Wednesday after going 0-4. They went 1-4. Now maybe looking to go 2-4. We'll see if they can pull it out here. 
Tigers Ross needs this win, just like they needed their first one, just like they'll need the rest of the wins, right, until they get back to a winning record, I think, where this yep. team expects to be. You can't feel good about Dignitas until they're, they're winning games, consistently like you would expect them to do. You can't say that the, the God roster change, uh, the player change, was effective until they are at least beating teams that on paper they should be beating based on right. their previous record. Well, I mean, you look at it, right, and it's just really difficult for them to kind of jump into the fray here and really do something with it. But let's sure. look at the teams, guys. On the screen, you see Snipe laid out, Kiki or not in the solo lane, Derby in the mid lane, and Continental playing Guardian Allied is going to be the Hunter player and Weaken in the jungle. Their opponents today fighting out of the blue side of the map, bottom side of the minimap, Spectator UI, left side, it is Team Dignitas. It's going to be Shing in the solo lane as Aphrodite. Na will be your mid laner, this time holding it down as Ao Guang. Last is the captain in the jungle as Sir Ket. Zatman will be your hunter as Apollo, and Dare to Carry your guardian Athena. Guardian Athena, and always a great choice there. Gab and Athena both can be selected here for this match. Dintas and Snipe highly valuing their Guardian picks. Giannis on Jerby, I'm curious to see how this is going to work for him. He's played a lot of interesting characters in the mid lane. Kronos, notably one of them, but Nuwa has been his kind of bread and butter. They ban specifically on the side of Snipe so that they can get Nuwa to Jerby, and Dintas says, oh, I see your strategy. No Nuwa for Jerby. They shut it down pretty easily here, but they're also going to give him uh, Giannis, which, you know, if you're a high-level mid player, you can pick up Giannis rather easily, you're just going to miss the opportunity to utilize the portals effectively, right? Where you're able to kind of get the animation down so you can jump into uh, an escape or initiate properly and kind of get the timings, but we'll see if it works out for them. Rotating in the mid lane is Snipe with all five members. They went all the way around Ooh, the map, ring hey, around the Rosie, hey but there. nothing, <laughs> nothing <laughs> to be doing. They walk away, they're like, oh wow, there's way too many of both of us here. Let's run away and hide because it's scary. Is Left side of the map, warded up by Team Dignitas, making sure those invades don't come in, those ever so popular orange buff invades, but look at this, uh, Look at their backside ward here, just off of the left side back camps is, uh, well, the last is helicopter ward, very, very early here. Um, and, and generally speaking, I feel like you would want it a little bit, well, this is to stop the early invade from the solo lane, from the jungler. Right. But and you would normally expect a ward a little bit in between the orange and the blue to stop the invade coming from the jungler after kind of around that, that two and a half minute mark, three minute mark when the mid camps come back up and uh, rotating over with the mid. But so here they're a little bit worried, it seems like, about Weekend being able to make their way across it and outpace Sir Ket and steal that orange buff away. That orange buff, it's kind of a big point of contention for both teams, um, as we've seen in the first week and a half of the SPL, and we'll see how that kind of, you know, tends to grow from now on. Uh, you know, it's a great steal, right? A lot of junglers do rely on their movement speed buff, uh, notably like Thanatos, Mercury, uh, even Nemesis, realistically, but we can steal it away from a character like Sir Kent. Not the biggest of deals, but we'll see how they work towards it. We're seeing more and more, and I'm very curious uh, as to why this is happening right now, Bart, but you see a lot of teams actually skipping the damage. This is the second time today we've seen this, where on the order side of things, they leave the damage buff, they do they three-man the mid-camps, and they go straight to the blue, and then they go to the solo lane, leaving this alone for the time being. It seems to be the, the case that they just want to try to amplify the mid-player, and so what they do is they go to the blue buff, take it, go to the solo lane, push it up, then go to mid, help them push the wave, get another full wave, and then they both, after the wave is clear, go to damage buff to solo it together. Right, yeah, that has been the favorite start so far, and uh, on, at least on the order side for... Getting the solo lane, it helps your solo laner get to the lane at level 2 fast enough because the Chaos has a faster clear. Right. Um, so it, it's just a little bit easier for them to make that happen. Plus, it allows your jungler on the order side to pick up orange as their first buff instead of uh, having to make a strange kind of choice with the red and then the Chaos side getting the early red while you are left kind of in the no man's land and have your orange buff invadable. So uh, it's a little bit of a safer start, honestly. Definitely. Well, the other thing, too, is a lot of junglers don't really need damage early on. They're kind of just picking it up as the first yeah, buff, yeah, guaranteed. Right. And so now you see Lass is going over the movement speed buff. He's going to pick it up, secure it. He's got more movement speed, more attack speed, able to kind of invade a little bit more effectively. And he doesn't have to worry about the movement speed being stolen. This is basically an anti-meta technique here. You're realizing that a lot of times, almost always, in fact, 98% of the games, the jungler on the order side will go to the damage buff, take it, and have it down. So you always invade the movement speed buff, knowing that that's going to be available. When you reverse it, the enemy jungler doesn't know what to evade anymore, they don't have vision to do it. Uh, take a lot of damage mid lane is last, so he's going to take this and go over to the damage buff to give it to Na, who now hits level 5 because of it. Back Harpy will be shared as well. A lot of sharing of experience. Yeah, Bumba's mass factoring into this as well. Also factors that are as simple as something like solo laners right now aren't getting hog. Nope. Right? And, and if they do, it's nope. always because they're physical, and mages are more favored in that lane. And so without the hogs, they need to help clearing it. Yep. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things going into it. The primary things, I think, are getting the lane on time, yep. securing your blue buff without hog, and Bumba's mass being able to share the XP. Right. 
Well, even if you don't pick up Hog 2 in the beginning, you still have time to go back and clear the mid lane and kind of go over to the back, move it, speed up, and pick it up as well. But that is neither here nor there. Looking at Animization, though, Last will go back and pick up his Combat Book and an Aegis Amulet will be his uh, active item selection. This will be avoiding a lot of the damage from Giannis specifically and possibly an ultimate from Rom. Not so much for Chuck or for Nemesis, but just kind of keep himself safe. Of course, this will be the greater Aegis that allows him to use it while being CC'd. Uh, across the way, 14 to didn't toss. No real commitment to actives just yet. Besides Lasses, we've got Gnaw picking up Purification Beads 1. Uh, again, we're going to be avoiding a lot of the CC coming out from Spite. And, and more importantly, the portal, of course, to start the game. But as the game does transcend into a mid and late game team fights, he's going to be avoiding the knock-up from Geb, uh, the silence from Chalk, and of course the ultimate coming out from Nemesis. A little bit of a missed timing there by Team Dignitas, losing both of the mid camps on the respawn there to the rotating Nemesis out of the jungle for weekend. And on the other side, it was Jerby and, of course, Incon rotating over to pick that up. So Snipe getting a little bit ahead here. Uh, the goal not so important, but about 500 experience going up their way as both the camps go to them. Athena is going to come over towards the Gold Fury area. Double warding, actually triple warding is Na. One on the top and bottom side of the left mid camp and one on top of the right mid camp for ward placement. Nice play there. On the right side, we do see Lassus lurking, looking for a kill here. He can jump over the wall, uh, but will need Deathbane to clear the kill there, which means he will have no escapes at that point. Uh, coming into poke, he does have the madness to pull him out of the tower, looking for the jump, going to find it. Look for the ultimate, doesn't go for it. He's going to dash with the Deathbane, going for the ultimate as well. The damage might come through. The Athena ultimate on top, but a little bit late there, coming out from Shing, very, very tough kind of combo there, but interesting enough. Yeah, nothing doing. Lassus will get saved out by the Aphrodite Link there. And he's going to be A-OK, -okay, and Dignitas is going to fall back, but they did expend a lot of resources to get over to that side of the map. Al Kuang rotating out of the mid lane, in addition to the Athena ultimate coming out, and nothing really doing there. They do pick up the kill on Kiki, but can they get lane advantage with this four-man rotation, or will they have just given Giannis room to farm that they so desperately need to shut down? The farm can't go too high. Um, and that's the thing, right? We have a lot of characters in this game that get very, very good towards the late stage, and we ha don't really have very many characters that are good at ending the game early. And so a lot of times, it's almost better just to invest very hard into the late game and turtle, 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 play safe, because there's a lot of gold to be gained on the map. You got Gold Fury, you got towers, a lot of objectives in the jungle as well with those camps and mid camps, each mid camp being worth 90 golds. So of course, every three minutes, you'll get 180 gold opportunity for yourself or to share with teammates. Very strong play there. Uh, mid late Derby is backing. Looks like they interrupted by Na on clear whether that was a back bait or not. It seemed like it wasn't because Jeremy was just kind of just hanging out there. Uh, but since we're talking about the mid lane, I want to look at the mid players as we're uh, kind of watching the mid play together here. Jeremy at 2.6 KDA across the way. Nah has finally gone from 1 KDA to 1.1 KDA after Wednesday's, after Wednesday's match. And now 408 GPM across the way. 467 GPM for Jerb. Hey, might as well take this thing down because you know what doesn't matter, Dry Bear? Stats. 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 Statistics are just numbers, man. Statistics are just numbers. It's only team play that matters. And That's right. You know, that, that one, when Naw first said that before they found their win, it was kind of like, uh, oh, you silly, silly boy. But now it's like, you know, maybe there's something to this. You know, maybe it's it's the team synergy and their ability to uh, improvise on the fly and, and, you know, believe in each other. And, and, and that's how they're going to find these wins. And so far for Dignitas, it's working. It's it's working. I mean, they've rest, they've gotten back the gold lead here. Experience still not in their favor, but they are out farming ever so slightly. And that's kind of shades of what we saw out of the original Team Dignitas. This, this little bit at a time. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna war win this war of attrition, and, and, and can they pull ahead little by little in this game? They did lose those early mid camps, so and not quite as efficient as maybe they would like to be, but it's looking okay for them this game. Yeah, looking okay so far. Mid camp on the left side, we'll go to Dintel's right side, looking to steal it away. Is gonna be Shing. Ultimate coming out of Nemesis from the backside. Good rotation. Shing forced back. Here gonna use the back off. Ultimate coming out from Giannis as well. Jeremy's in the fight. Silence coming out and Dare to Care, forcing him to back off a little bit. Tordios on the ground will zone out. Weaken. Good squall dash through tornado, but doesn't get hit by it actually. Oh, Lassus is in trouble, looking for Jervy. Gonna find Kiki in the jungle, though. Needs a little bit of damage on the side of Kiki to force him out. Looks like it won't be the case. Lass is still hanging out, looking for a possible initiation. Still slow, looking for the dash. Gonna find the madness, gonna find the deathbane oh, as well. Does he have an ultimate available? He does it. indeed. He actually go for a kill here, but Kiki waiting the wings and the fact that Na was not in the fight. Our ally done. rotated for that driver, giving Zatman a lot of free reign here. Oh, he's yeah. gonna have two archers worth of in hands on the tower, taking about 50%. And he's happy to take a few more additional shots, but can't take too many as they stack up damaging content. In a lot of trouble here. Ultimate coming through from Naw as well. Do they have enough to kill him? The ultimate from Circuit is there taking him down. It is indeed detonating the poison. Not going to find Jeremy, but the taunt will. It's the second blood as well going to Team Dignitas here. And last is the captain picking up credit for that one. No, I'm sorry. That one did go to Naw. It looks like the tornado is ticking him down. So, hey, it's a good game for Naw so far. 1 0 0, 4200 net worth. Topping the boards. Right behind him is Shing at 4200 himself. And Zatman 
right there as well. And then, of course, the Captain Lasses, I'm sorry, actually the goal leader in this game at 4,600 on the back of the first one, has his Aegis, has his pen boots, and is building into even more pen now. Uh, it's going to be that Jotun's Wrath into pen build for Sir Ket. Will he get the crit? Online before Jerby comes online is kind of the uh, the question here. I feel. Well, looking at Jerby, right, sitting currently about 400 gold behind Lapsus, so he's definitely in that threshold uh, where it could start to get out of hand. And we'll see what he decides to do with it. I mean, he realistically he just needs that Jotun's uh, Jotun's wrath done. He just needs the penetration on top of the cooldown plus extra physical power, and then he just needs to start jumping on top. It doesn't seem like he's going for that crit build right off the bat, which we see a lot of Circuits do. I mean, a lot of times Circuit will just go boots, rage, Deathbringer, and just crit, 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 crit on the yeah. Deathbane. But the question is, you know, what is Last is thinking here. He's going to go for early game control, try to use more ultimates, try to use more, um, you know, madness on the two and try to just pull people towards him and cause them to attack each other. Or will he try to just transcend directly into a uh, crit build and then look for mid game damage? I believe that this is his standard build, uh, which would be very, very similar to what you see from a Thanatos. It's likely to be Warrior Tabi into Jotuns into Magis into crit, crit, crit. Well, crit that would be my guess. Later. Um, Unless they get way ahead in what you made by an earlier crit, but generally speaking, my expectation would be Pen Boots, Jotun's, Magi's crit. Uh, seems like it's Jotun's, Deathbringer, and Malice or Rage afterwards. So he just, he just, he delays the build by one item, picking up the Jotun's like I was thinking, and then Magic's Blessing late, late in the game uh, mm -hmm. is his, his standard build there. So, uh, like I was thinking, it's just, you know, he just likes to pick up a Jotun's to try to transition easier into the crit build, and that's kind of the downside, right? A lot of circuits will build Death But are, are those from competitive games, or are those from... From both. From League and... and from both. My, my, the board. my expectation would be in, in a competitive game like this, he will build into the Magi's, most likely. Because it, it's just so much safer. Unless they're way ahead, at which point he may feel safe going well, for it. But here's the other thing as well. A, I mean, it does nerf her. I mean, Sir Ket's not built down. to be in the team fight. Sir Ket's yeah, an assassin absolutely. that goes by, goes in the backside, drive by, kill someone, and get out. Sir Ket's not really built to be there. And so, you know, if you start building towards defense as a character like Sir Ket, all of a sudden you can't assassinate anybody, and you can't stay in the team fight anyway because you're not built for it. And so you're not really hitting an effective point at any at any, at any range there. So I think he's just going to go for Deathbringer after this. Great ultimate coming through. going to find some damage there. Ultimate coming from uh, Derby actually forcing the retreat from Na. Getting slowed by the rain dance. Actually going to be backing off his Kiki. They almost got a perfect initiation, but Dick was unable to close that one out. Of course, the ultimate from Na did not land that point. Deadman landing from above, looking for a continued team fight. You're going to find and cause an He's rolling out, gets interrupted as they step in front of it. Dedek here taking oh, the brunt of the damage here. HP. Na dropping very, very low. Looking for the ultimate. It's going to be Allen finding it. Na going to go down here. Looking for last is not going to find this one. Derby He's continuing on with the chase here. There goes the birds coming out from Shing. Will hit Lassus, which is necessary, of course. He just gets hit by an unstable vortex. And Dare to Care is daring to care about the front line here and holding it down so his teammates can escape. Man, oh man, that Sir Ket trap was very nice. Now it's Zatman caught out a bit in the mid lane here. Dare to Care as well. Damage coming through. Geb ultimate's going to be expended. They're going to knock up Dare to Care, try to burst down the tank. But can Athena dash through? He's going to have it available. Sir Ket taunting targets. Dare to Care still alive with a shield. Weaken diving the tower. Finds the kill. And now it's Inca on the force to run. But they're going to go back onto Weaken. They want the kill. And the bird should be enough to finish him off. Last is going to go ahead and take away that last hit with the thrown dagger. And down will fall Weaken. Athena, however, for Dare to Care on the side of Dignitas is down. In the meantime, Snipe is picking up a kill on the Gold Fury. It's getting close. Here comes Lassus. Crit cutting through. He can maybe kill both here. Down goes the continent. You're allied in a lot of trouble. Lassus, does he have another leap available? He's got to get over the wall. Here comes Zatman as well. They're going to dive this one. Zatman taking the tower. Lassus needs the leap. He should have it online any second. There's the dash through. One auto attack. Down goes allied for a double kill. Gold Fury traded. Probably still worth it overall, but a lot of momentum going the way of Dignitas, and they may be able to capitalize with some objectives, jungling, and tower. Huge, huge pickup there by Lass, and great team fight by Dig overall. Honestly, let's talk a little bit about Lass and Weaken here in this matchup. Weaken, 4.6 KDA, 465 GPM. Across the way, Lass, much, much less there. 1.7 KDA and 434 GPM on the board. But trying to make that a little bit different here as he's starting this game 4-0 and 2. Mickey Finnis, the owners cry. Dare to care very low in the mid lane. Look for the kills. Can they find it? Here's also coming out. Going to hit both of them on Na. Look for the slow. Going to find Weaken. Na makes a huge play. The two-man ultimate into the squall for the kill onto Weaken, making it a one-for-one -one trade. Nah, fans unite. He's been doing fairly well for himself here so far in this game. Oh, we may be actually uh, speaking too soon here. Actually, Jerby going to overextend for this kill. Lass is here. There's the ultimate coming out. He just needs to burst in his Gep Shield, and the ult should be enough to take him down. But he's got one more tick on it. Not going to be enough. Good. Jerby going to survive. Lass need about one more in hand to get through that Gep Shield and kill him off.
Yep, shield too good in that situation. Uh, back to the so left lane, though, will be Zatman trying to make sure this tower doesn't take a little bit too much damage. But looking at the numbers here for the Hunters, we do see Zatman at 6,300. Across the way, we've got Allied at 6,000. So Allied's 300 gold behind uh, Zatman, who, of course, uh, Zatman's got 1, 0, and 2, and they were able to kill off the Gold Fury. Uh, actually, the Gold Fury went to Snipe. So, uh, you know, a little bit interesting that uh, Zatman is actually... Uh, on top of allied here in the gold gain, considering the fact that, uh, well, actually, you know, that's not true. The tower uh, hasn't fallen yet on either side, but the allied did rotate a lot more than Zatman, especially in that early fight, it kind of rotated all the way across the map. So that's going to be a big reason why. Well, Lassus is going deep here. There's Athena old out on top of him. The burst is going to come through. He's going to dash around Incon. In fact, Athena crashing down, doing a lot of damage with a big silence coming up from Kiki. They want to pursue, but the rollout's going to come out from in. Oh, oh wow. Care. A lot of damage on that dash. Kiki now the one that's in trouble. The poison is stacked up. Lassus needs to disengage. For the moment, at least, Axe coming through, and down he goes, but the Zatman rotation is good. Ultimate from Nas there as well. Jerby very, very low, trying to escape from the site, but should be chased down by Zatman or the rotation. Lassus needs the way for the next set of birds to be able to re-engage. Jerby's here, he's gonna hit oh! the same time! Jerby with a big play, is now gonna go through, back through! Very, very foolishly there, going back in and re-engaging that fight is Jerby, but he does pick up that kill onto Lassus. I think he had a couple more people low there, but a nice return kill there, preventing Deacon Toss from getting too much out of that. Uh, killing off their assassin, which will hurt their, their DPS a little bit, but they should be able to pressure this right side tower pretty heavily now with the Athena and the Aphrodite here, and if they uh, want to rotate Zatman back over as well, can maybe take it. That was an interesting fight there. I mean, there was a lot of distance between players, right? We saw at the very beginning of the fight, Dinitas was dictating the pace, but Snipe's response was just to take the full open field and spread the cheekiness of Zatman's play there was really rough, though, because he dove the tower and tried to get the kill, but couldn't find it, forcing Jerby to kind of run through, put the portal on the wall, and try to transfer through. It was a great play, which allowed him to get a kill with the ultimate, but it's a tough decision to make where you really want to kind of kite around the hunter, but be part of the team fight at the same time. Right side lane, Kiki or Na will find the tower. And uh, happily, well, the rest of Snipe is going to get that gold. And this game is still pretty tight in terms of gold difference. Only 500 gold separating teams, but the experience is on the back of Dignitas with their kills up by about 3,000 at this stage in the game. Right now, we're going to see him uh, putting through 10 to 4, 14 and a half minutes into the game. Derdicker is going to find Incontinentia in the j jungle. A lot of warding coming through. Jerby's going to rotate over, looking for a kill here on Derdicker, possibly. Pop the ultimate early here. Not going to be enough. The single target damage will take him down. Waking with the kill on Derdicker, going towards the tower. Not going to find it, unfortunately, enough. And that is going to be a missed opportunity for Dinitas as Derdicker goes down. The Gold is not available right now, but it's a good thing to keep the, uh, the uh, actually, Guardian, actually, Jerby in trouble here. Popping the damage is going to be Lassus. Popping the damage plus the cab shield buys time, still alive. Last is in trouble. Damage from above. Last is getting too greedy in that fight. The damage is gonna come out here, but he dashes away, still alive thanks to Aphrodite's healing and bubble. Wow. Neither Lassus or Jerb die there. A lot expended as well to try to collapse onto Lassus, and that being said, Zatman is going to find the tower. Well, tower's gonna go down there, fortunately enough. Right side we see Shin kind of rotate over and try to clear out this wave. Uh, in the absence of Kiki, but Kiki will spot it out. Now, Kiki was able to push the right side solo lane and take it down, unfortunately enough, uh, for Shing, but he's not really letting it deter him too much. We've got a lot of sentry wards on the map, good rotation coverage for Dintas. You see a lot of uh, blue and purple wards on the right side of the map. A little strange that we do denote blue versus purple, but the other ones are all red, but we're going to keep going with that convention. And of course, you're going to see the vision coverage in front of the mid camps for Dintas. There's no uh, wards on the left side of the map for Snipe, it looks like. Actually, there's one uh, by the blue buff hiding under a blue ward there uh, by the blue buff on the bottom side of the map, of course, will be a ward from Snipe. The movement speed buff will be taken here by Lassus, and the Gulfier is standing. Well, you know, it, it, I was actually wrong here about Lassus' build. It, it is going to be straight into crit, like he'd be the Deathbringer here with the Balance Blade. Sorry, the Short Sword finished up. Shing maybe in some trouble here. called out. Uh, Shing maybe dead to rights, actually. He's going to be able to... Hold on, what am I saying? That's an Athena that's going to be coming with the ultimate and Aphrodite with their invulnerability ult. It's going to force a disengage in and out. Kwong ultimate used there as well. And now trying to pile back on. Jeremy coming through the wall. Does he have the shotgun available? Does not. And here comes the rest of Dignitas. Where is Zatman? Is he taking the skies just yet? No, he's just in this fight in the front lines. Incon is going to fall down. His ultimate not available. There's the ultimate detonating from last. has been now finding the final hit. Taking the skies now is allied. But no one really low enough to snipe out here. Just going to try to do some damage in this team fight. Kiki re-engaging. There's a chalk ultimate used, but they're not going to find anything on the back of it. Shing going to be able to heal himself up. Aphrodite stunning him out. There's the birds as well. That's a lot of ultimates used and nothing capitalized on. Dignitas at least has gotten some kills out of this fight. No ultimates remaining. And Kiki's still trying to fight Shing, playing the dangerous dance of keeping his, uh, well, just at the edge of valuability is that link. And uh, it is going to expire, but he is able to heal up Lassus as his new target. 
Oh, they're actually going to be able to keep Kiki away from that portal for the moment and nearly able to do enough damage to kill him. Zapman wants to re-engage, but looks like uh, he's going to give the yes sir and fall back a little bit and not dive the tower there. Yeah, not really worth it at this point. The goal here is standing, so Dignitas is going to come over here and try and take this down. And it's not going to be enough, though. I don't know if they'll be able to take this tonight. It's coming down. There's a lot of, not a lot of ultimates available. This is going to be a strictly rogue team fight where a lot of base attacks and abilities come through. Good ultimate coming out from Jeremy Force in the back. Looking for Na. Na knocked out. Gold 3 is going to be leashed out here. Going to go to Dignitas with the Hog. Hunt in trouble here. Pop with the Gep Shield. Will be available for Wig, who's dropping low in the back of the team fight. Oh. Dashing away with Vengeance. Zatman will go to Allied. They're still going to take on here. They want to find a kill on Shing. Allied is the only one in the front line. No one else is committing in Entirely, the good movement speed from Threshold on Jeremy will be enough to get him over here. Look at oh, Lassus. <laughs> I don't oh, know. God. If he, if, well, if he kills someone with a poison. They can see him now. And it spreads. There's the Athena ultimate coming out as well. Here he comes in. Oh, he's going to do so much damage Jeremy. He just needs to ult him and get the ult to detonate. He has it here. Now going to the Incon. They just need to detonate on three here. If they can just kill Kiki and get it to pop. They did. The poison spread around now. But Lassus is down. And maybe not to take down Incon. One more tick's going to do it. And down. The Continental triple kill for Lassus. That's a top play, man! And then it's just coming to the fact that people don't know what Sir Cat's ultimate does. I mean, if you're poisoned with an explosive poison, why group up like that? But Incon dies needlessly because of the AoE explosion damage on that last breath poison. For those of you who don't know, when Sir Cat grabs you with the stinger and stings you, it ticks down with that last breath poison. If you die in the process, it will explode and apply the poison to everyone else around you, which also will explode. This is a ripple effect of a chain reaction, and you're going to see that there killing off Incontinentia after the fact. It was a good positioning with the uh, the stealth there, and they knew the fact that, you know, Derek here had an ultimate, so why not use Athena and Sir Cat together to try to clean up the fight. They got a three for one. You know, I was just surprised that he didn't ult Jeremy when he was in the agent. Still would have applied the poison. They could have burst that target a little easier. I guess he was worried about him getting out, but ulting on Incon there, it made it a very awkward situation for Snipe because if he died, they all would have gotten poison because they needed to pile in and rely on the Guardian to keep that fight going. And, well, you see what happens there. The poison spreads and two go down. Two go down indeed. The damage buff will be going down in response here. By no, on the right side of the map. Let's look at the itemization. We do have CDR being picked up by Shing. He's got that uh, shoes of the focus, and of course he's got the breastplate of Valor. Warlock Sash completed as well. Very, very tanky buildup. Nas gonna go for it. Looks like a Chronos pendant possibly here early on. Yeah, a lot likely. of times we don't see people rushing Rod anymore. It's kind of a thing of the past. Uh, and if you see a lost artifact, a lot of times it doesn't mean that Chronos pendant. Uh, just because CDR is a little bit more difficult to get nowadays as a mage, uh, and the main reason for that is that pen is a little bit more difficult to get uh, for mages in general. Of course, that will change the next patch with that helm coming out. But the problem is that, you know, there's less pen than there is CDR. So a lot of times you'll see almost every mage go Shoes of the Magi to get the pen. And then they'll go into maybe some CDR, like, as their third, fourth, or fifth item. Snipe doing a little bit of pushing up here onto Zapman, but they're not going to be able to go in on to the Apollo just yet. As you mentioned, just so cheeky. Just able to just keep those people CC'd down and, and dash around them, knocking them up, slowing them down, speeding himself up, flying through the skies, more knockups. Burst damage, attack speed stims. I mean, he's just so hard. A little bit of, uh, you know, he's kind of a little bit of this jack of all trades, master of yes. all trades kind of feeling. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and so it's just so hard to kind of dive in where Rom, you know, once he, you do get that, that backflip down, a little bit easier to aggress into without the uh, AoE hard CC. Well, the AoE hard CC does make a big difference. Um, so we'll see if it can make a, a little bit difference in the late stage of the game. The other thing as well is that, you know, Apollo also has that steroid on his passive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of built in, so he doesn't have to cast anything. No mana cost associated with the non-trouble here. He takes the damage, decides to fight instead. Take a lot of free harassment, but the ultimate from Data Care will come out as a response. Last is going to go through the backs of the jungle, uh, looking for I, warding, I guess. I don't know. He's running back there. Uh, he's going to run over towards the uh, mid area on top of the fire giant. Uh, of course, the damage buff is not available. They're going to look for a kill on Weaken or Kiki here under tower. They do have the Jerby ultimate to kind of rotate over. Last can jump away after the Nemesis ultimate has a big, big win, but Last takes a drive by by Jerby. Threshold on the ground, getting some movement speed up. Unstable Vortex not going to land there. There goes the Thunder Strike, but not going to be enough to get them into the fight or start a team fight at all. And Heavenly Agility was used there, so a fairly important cooldown used. Granted, 90 seconds is it's going to be down for Dig, but Snipe not looking to make plays in the back of it. Lassus has a decent angle here on the Kiki. He's going to get taunted out. He's going to take a lot of damage, but going to be able to heal the back up easily with the Rain Dance. And uh, unfortunately for Dignitas, Zapman has committed to this fight, and Snipe's going to be able to easily just rotate back under the tower, but Zapman looks like he wants to dive here, and dive he will to the backside of the tower. Shield going to be used immediately when he lands. It's going to be Kiki they're going to pile into, but he's just such a tanky target. They should have maybe tried to go for something like Weaken here, although Weaken and Giannis uh, on Jeremy are both just so elusive with those characters, but the tower does go down, 
And but it right, looks like they're gonna trade the mid lane to Allied as well. They need to keep pushing and find this tier two, or this is not gonna be worth it. However, Gold Fury coming back up soon. They gotta be the left side of the map. A, a tough call from Dignitas there, and I don't think they come out ahead. That's weird. That was really weird. I mean, if you're gonna initiate on someone and try to burst them down, it's not gonna be Chalk for two reasons. Number one, he's very tanky, so he's hard to kill. Number two, if you're grouping up on a Chalk, you are basically initiating for the enemy team. Because he's gonna ult, silence four people, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they can counter initiate. So that was a really weird decision from Dinitas. Luckily for them, Snipe did not capitalize on it. Of course, Allied was not there, but we'll see. Jumping Blue is gonna be the last to try to find Incon. Gonna do a lot of damage here. Looking for the ult, gonna find it. Yanitol, they're not gonna hit anyone. Incon's about the third uh, Looking up there is gonna be Allied ticking down from the poison. Will he die from it? Last dropping low, dashing away with the death being KK the his like he will not find the kill on that one. Taunt on Ally will be coming down. Nah, will take it out with a basic attack. Tornado on the ground, gonna find Jerv. He needs the squall to drop him low enough to take him out with the tornado damage. Looks like it's not gonna be enough. He will escape, but Kiki will not. It is nah for him this time around, as it looks like it's gonna be a two for O exchange. The gold fury is standing, the fire giant available. Jerby Week and Incon still up though for snipes, so they can't push into the gold fury just yet. And because you can't push into the Gold Fury without, uh, you know, killing the enemy tank, why not take the Fire Giant here, Dignitas? Gonna try to sneak one over here onto Snipe. Looks like they were spotted out by this ward that Weakened is just now passing. Fire Giant trying to get low and now going to drop to the side of Dignitas. And now it's Incon who's gonna take a spill here. No way he gets out of this one. Warcraft 3 surround from the five members of Dignitas. He somehow finds a way out, but Lassus still gets the crit, dealing a lot of damage on the back of that Geb. And down he will fall indeed. Incon down for 35 seconds. They get a Gold Fury off of this as well as some Tier 2s. Well, Last is going to start pushing up to the forefront here, looking for this mid tower. All five members for Dinitas are grouping up. Taking up the tower is going to be Dare to Care very easily here in the third generation of Aphrodite and, of course, that Fire Giant buff. He is A okay. Uh, he's also going to be looking for that generation from Emerald Tempest's Shell is activated here. Double taunt. Looking for Kiki. Keep dropping the very low. Always uh, looking for damage reduction as well as an AoE silence. He's got the AoE damage on top of Dare to Care. Dare heal, to though. The slow is going to be too much. Took way too much from the Phoenix on Dare to Care. I, you know, I would venture to wager to reckon to figure that Dare to Care actually took probably about 60% of HP just from the Phoenix. Oh uh, yeah, I would imagine so. He was, he was taking it for a long time and, and tower and Phoenix damage, structure damage in this game stacks up based on the number of times it hits you. Again, Shield going out on the weekend to stop the slow, but he's going to eat a crit to the face from Zatman there and that will dissuade him from moving forward. And Zatman throwing out those 360 damage crits with the Fire Giant buff on his back plus an Executioner. It's just scary to try to initiate into and Lassus has his Deathbringer online as well. He's got 3,000 gold in hand, enough to pick up his Malice if he wants it, or go into Rage as well, and up the crits. Trying to make a play now is Snipe onto the Gold Fury, but it's going to be spotted out by Nah. And Nah, Dignitas doesn't seem to have a lot of urgency around this. They're going to finish off the blue buff and now rotate back in. Here comes the Tornadoes down shortly, I'd imagine. Algon Ultimate still not used, still looking for it as Nah. Now going to come out hitting one, not hitting two. Weaken, not going to die either. Taking the skies is allied, but very low is Snipe. If Lassus can find his way to the back lines, it should result in some kills. Down goes Incontinential. Leaping forward is Lassus. Allied is in trouble. Nog gets picked up by Jeremy in the backside with that ultimate. And Allied may die. Yes! Poison now going on to Kiki. Can they get Kiki to detonate as well? They will indeed, but it's not going to hit Jeremy. Jeremy's going to use an Aegis Amulet, but not near any walls he can pour through. And down goes Jerb to Shing's back off. And it's another four-man wipe for Snipe. This time Dignitas able to take a Tier 2 on the left. They lose a Gold Fury, but still have a commanding lead of this game. Man, Lass is looking so good right now. 12, 2, and 6. And he is just putting these teamfight initiations and controls on his back. I mean, he is the driving point for these fights and doing incredibly well at it. He's going to take up the Phoenix here. going to run back in with the shell activated, of course. The Phoenix will fall. Wicked, not a whole lot he can do about it, but... Yeah, you know, it's so hard, right? Because he has so much disruption. He gets in there, gets a good madness pull with his uh, second ability, of course, uh, and is able to spread them out. And then, of course, he jumps on the right target. He bursted down Kiki, got the tick there with the explosion poison. Almost got a quadra. I mean, if that last kill, that last kill wasn't taken away from someone else, he would have had a quadra kill in that fight. So Lassus is just dominating right It now. was indeed the Malice that he did have in that last fight. He's also sold off his Bombas and picked up the Magi's Blessing. Coming in as his fifth item now. One more away from sixth slot. It is Lassus, 12-2 and 6. The captain definitely carrying his team in this game with the amount of damage and mat control that's coming out. Uh, in the meantime, Gnaw has picked up the Rod of Tahuti over the Kronos Pendant. Uh, not something that we would have expected had they been at parity, but with this kind of lead, it makes a lot of sense. Dare to Care has his Winged Blade online as well. Almost impossible to slow at this point. Zatman Crit online on the backside here, Snipe, they have two Executioners between, well, Weaken and Allied, and this is Weaken, same build we saw him be very dominant with before. We, he will be building into the Rage Blade as well, but not sure if he's going to come online as a damage dealer soon enough, and Jeremy with his Divine Ruin, 
He's not going to be able to stack that up on the Aphrodite here. And with the Circuit advantage going the way of Dignitas and the early kill they got onto Chalk, they were able to bully him. And now, when he's going to be trying to rely on his healing to stay in this fight, even though he's under level and under itemized, he's going to get his healing completely shut down by the Circuit ult. And ultimate is going to do a lot here. Portal on the ground. Going to force them back. Derek here takes some harassment from the Phoenix. He'd be careful about taking the Phoenix for too long this time around. Popping the ultimate. He's going to go on to last. Look for Allied. Allied into the tornado. He goes up in the air. He comes right back down. Will the damage be enough in the ultimate? Plus the trails will take him out. Looks like it will not, but he's dropping so very low. Last attack in the Phoenix. Taking way too much damage here by himself. Dies as the Phoenix goes down. Zemmick kills off Kiki. In the meantime, though, we can take a damage from that tornado. Looking for Jervy. Jervy pops the He can't get away from this one. The shield might be enough. Going through the wall. Not going to be able to do save him, uh, but he will be saved by the the shield from Geb there. Allied going to dash back towards this Phoenix. Are they going to go back into this? Ultimate coming out from Nog going to land an Allied. Allied back in the well, though. Tornado do a lot of damage here. They're getting very deep. They're getting very green. Nog's going to die the damage from Incontinentia. Data care is very low as well. Slow from Weaken. They're diving the base, but I don't know why the three Phoenixes are down, but they don't really have as much control as they need. And honestly, they might just be forcing Snipe to leave the base. The Phoenix means kill it. But the, the taunting three out of the pool to try to use your Alphong ultimate and not even bothering to hit the Titan there, hubris from Dignitas results in a that deicide. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the they ultimate could have, have easily the won there, but instead they go for the kills, the kills and yeah. the flashiness. And Dignitas, uh, they deserve to win this game, but they've definitely given Snipe the opening here to come back and take this one away from them. Fire Giant's gonna go their way on the back of that Dia side. Now they did just kill the right Phoenix. Left Phoenix is about to respawn. The mid Phoenix has already respawned here. They're gonna go for the Fire Giant last, the first one on the scene. Fire Giant might be gone by the time Da and Derek here come back into the fight though. But it's really interesting to see them go for kills there instead of going for the Titan and ending the match there, then and there. Uh, looks like the Fire Giant will be completed to Jerb spawn in time. He did! So all five members on Snipe got the Fire Giant buff. So instead of ending the game with a massive Spirits Tempest from Al Guang on Na and going for the single target damage to burst him down, they dove the well looking for kills and lost the Fire Giant. I mean, the word throw gets used a lot in situations where teams take Fire Giants uh, and get blown up or they, they make one bad decision and it ends up getting exploited to win the game. And a lot of times those are just mental mistakes. Diving the well of your enemy when you could have instead won yes. the game, yes. that is throwing the game. If they do end up losing this, this is definitely a throw. Although Dignitas still quite a bit ahead. They didn't give back much. They gave back a lot of experience, in fact. I mean, at this fight, they gave back about six or 7,000 experience. I mean, just look at the graph here. I mean, the gold dips down a little bit from the Fire Giant, but the experience, they gave back so much. They were getting up to about 10k, and now the lead back down to about 5k, so about 5,000 experience handed back there from Dignitas and, and Snipe. If they can hold this next round of Phoenixes and get them back up, they should be okay to try to stabilize this game. There's so many weakened Phoenixes, of course, because they have died before, so we'll see if that plays a factor here. Dedicator now running on top of the Phoenix. That last side, last dashing into the fight. Ultimate coming out from Kiki, forcing back everyone. Ultimate going up in the air for Allied. Nimbus Ultimate, Ganal's gonna die. Weak's gonna come out here. Dashing across is Dare to Care. There goes the Ultimate from Shing. It's all on cooldown. There's only two Ultimates left. Actually, not ended up dying before he can pop his Ultimate. Last is already dead. They're looking for the back kill on Dare to Care. They can't find it. Zatman and Shing looking for Incontinentia, though not a very difficult target uh, to burst down um, in a lot of situations. Shing's going to drop low here. The crits are coming out. Shing's got nowhere to go. He's got no home. He's got no life. He goes down looking for the fire giant. Looking for the titan though. Can Zatman find it? He's pushing it. Athena ultimate gets killed off. Danica can't find it. Zatman's actually doing it. He needs a few more shots to do it. Oh! Dying. The titan is still alive with just 20% HP. Holding on to its very essence as Dig falls apart I, wow. <laughs> I mean... If they were going to die, why wouldn't they just do it at the start? If they were going to Titan Rush, why would they wait for three people to die? It was a last-ditch effort. I mean, they realized they had already lost that fight, and they were going to wipe there. Uh, I mean, I guess I suppose Allied could have gone back, but Gnaw had a pretty decent respawn here, but looks like, you know, the rest of the towers probably will be pushed here by Snipe. They're going to recoup. Uh, well, they're gonna actually going to end up the gold leaders here if they take the rest of the towers off the map. And they have wrestled this game away. Now down only two kills from Team Dignitas. And, I mean, a little bit of soft toss here from Dignitas. Well, I mean, the fact that Nod died with his ultimate means that they didn't have that big burst. And that's yeah. kind of like, I mean, Algon ultimates have the power to change lives. I mean, it's just it's just fate altering the yeah. way that Algon can hit you. And, you know, with him dying at the very beginning of the fight without, e I mean, I think he just placed, placed down a, no a way, tornado. No way, dude. Look at Kiki's fifth item. Oh my. What have you done, Hyrock?
It, it's not even Hyrox's fault. It's Hyrox's fault. It, it's not Hyrox's fault. This is Hyrox's fault. This is the same argument where girls say that it's men's fault that they fall in the, into the toilet because the seat was up. Look at the toilet before you sit on it. I mean, you're making the <laughs> situation. You're making the choice. <laughs> wait, 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 you're wait. making the choice to buy the Mark of the Vanguard. That is no one's fault but your own. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now that was a stretch. <laughs> And I'm wearing a lycra girdle, so I know something about stretching. There you go. Well, <laughs> back into <laughs> the game, ladies and gentlemen. Back into the I game. I feel like this is a, a little a conversation you've had recently in your household. No, not really. <laughs> it's, it feels to me like the same thing. <laughs> this feel, buying buying a Marco Vanguard in an online competitive video game. It's yes. very it sounds like the same thing to you as like the age old argument yes. that men and women have been having since yes. indoor plumbing. Yes. Okay. 100%. It, okay. It's incredibly analogous. <laughs> incredibly analogous. But here we are. We're back in the match. Welcome everyone to the Dignitas versus Knight match. 22 to 20 is the score. Dignitas is still in the lead, but very, very much struggle they're giving here, trying to take out the Titan and end the game strong. And Snipe is coming back through and through, able to win some of these team fights by taking out very key targets, uh, namely Na, who you know in the last fight died with his ultimate on uh, off of cooldown and available, but one that was unable to use it. Oh, Zatman by himself on the left side. They have a lot of single target damage. He tries to hold down this one. He maybe bursted down. Oh, and there it is. And Exploded. That's the problem about split pushing with Apollo. That's why Loki started put split pushing in his place. Is because Loki can avoid this and doesn't have to stand still for three seconds. You know, I I just don't have really a great explanation for what happened here. I mean, you basically have to just look at this game going forward. Is these teams are dead even? I mean, Dignitas has a three thousand gold lead and Snipe has a three thousand experience lead. Thirty five minutes in the game, this thing is uh, dead even here, and uh, Weaken is really really coming online as a damage dealer. It's it's starting to get pretty ugly. I mean, you saw how fast him and Allied were able to burn through the ulting Zatman there. Fire Giant started up from Snipe, but it doesn't look like they're going to commit to it just yet. They're looking to maybe take off some Magi's Blessings and, and find a little bit of damage onto some of these uh, these carries, at least, uh, and, and make it a bit more difficult for them to come in. Uh oh Kiki's going to silence out Shank. They're going to try to engage onto this. The slow's coming out now as a shield. That's a big through space and time from Jerby. It allow the team to re-aggress. Allied coming in. The outgoing ultimate is going to blow up Jerby. Almost to the tune of 1,200 damage there. Dander Care falling low. Can they re-engage onto this note? Fighting through the tornado is be too much. In the meantime, it is going to be a kill on to Allied, but Jerby will fall. I'm sorry, a kill from Allied onto Lassus. Lassus does get the return kill onto Jerby with the poison. And that should be enough to uh, prompt Snipe falling back. But Zatman has different feelings about this one. He's going to blow up. Weaken during his wow. lazy recall there, knowing there's an Apollo in the game. And now the damage starts to come back out as Zatman rallies forward. 600 damage crits hurt a lot. Down goes Allied. Can he find Incon as well? No, they cannot just yet. Backside, it's going to be Kiki or Na. They're going to look to collapse on. And Kiki, well, he doesn't have a great way to get out of this one, does he? Body blocking, surrounding him, counting the tornado. Kiki is dead to rights here. The last remaining member is going to be in Continentia, and he does not have a blink. So no blink onto the fire giant he goes. Looks like Team Dignitas does not care about the fire giant. Now, it's not late enough in the game where it's like a game-altering respawn time, but they, they have a small window here. You know, they've got about 20 to 30 seconds to try to do this. Now, it generally but takes... But if they tilted, I mean, are, are they going to dive here? I mean... Are, uh, it, it takes 25 to 45 seconds to push from Phoenix to Titan here. they got about 10 seconds until Jerby comes back up. They actually oh, might have man. the time frame. This is really close, but it actually looks like it's going to be successful. Incon's trying to tank it up, looking for the Titan to push back. If the leash it's going to heal. It looks like it healed a little bit there. Jerby's back up. Incon's going to go down. Spirits is going to come out. The Titan's dropping lower. They might be able to get this one. Looks like they're going for it. Get it. Toss finally ends the match, Ooh. killing off the Titan. The time frame was short, but it was long enough for them to secure it. Snipe will be dropped down here. Dinitas finally getting their second win of the SPL, going two and four. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm not sad that Snipe tried to force the issue there um, as, as we didn't get another hour-long game here in North America, but it, realistically, you know, Snipe, Snipe tried to... I think they needed to win about one more team fight before they tried to aggress that heavily and uh, really keep Dignitas pinned back, and, and unfortunately they, they do get kind of blown up as the uh, the resurgent from Zign resurgence from Dignitas comes down the fire giant side. Last is the captain going 13 to 5 in this game. Wow. You know, honestly, I want to bring it back to Lassus there because he has such great decision making. And and this is something we talked about face off the first week that Lassus is an instinctual player. That's the way he plays. He's very focused on his gut reaction. So as you can see from the peering window of destiny there as we uh, rotate over here and I pop up to the replay, but let's kind of watch this as we walk through well, this the play is such a great of play. Lassus. It, I mean it's 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 something that some players wouldn't have the guts to pull off, but he goes for it. Oh, right? it's like, oh look, there's a fight. Let me just wait. Wait here. Wait for a really long wait. time. 
Wait. And then and then okay, let's let's try to take the camps. Lasher Wait. says, all right, let's get the Athena ultimate out on top. Wait. And he's gonna leap back in with the Athena ultimate. Go. They can see him now. And he leaps in. Damage coming out. Jeremy realizes he's dead to right. So crit coming through, blowing up Jeremy. The ultimate comes out onto Kiki, who dies pretty quickly in this fight and spreads the poison. There it is. And now it's on to Incon. And Incon is. Uh, well, he's going to die here. One, two, three. There it is. Lassus with a triple kill as a poison ticks him down. And really a textbook. And in a lot of ways, that could be a, a trailer for Sir Ket and how to play her. And overall, Lassus really showing us what this god is worth. And, you know, I think this one is ones where Snipe, if they, they really are wishing this was a best of three. Oh, absolutely. I mean, right, they, they're like, they oh, all you do is ban Sir Ket instead of Rom. We could have won this game easy. Right, but it's also going to be one of those things where you look at it and say, okay, that was a mistake on both teams, right? Danaker almost got picked. And then we saw Jerby lazy backing in the middle. And then, of course, Allied taking a very poor road and also lazy backing for the Fire Giant. It's like, if you want to win the game, you can't lazy back in front of the Fire Giant. You just can't. Yeah. If you're going to back, it's, and it's, it's past 35 minutes, you have to back in a safe spot. They have momentum. They have pressure. They there's have anywhere control. there's got to be war yeah. 35 minutes in the game. That's Th that's going to be it, guys. But, you know, honestly, you saw a little bit of the patch notes today. You saw Kukla Khan. You also saw a lot of other things going on here. But let's check Is it Kukla Khan or Kukla Khan? Kukla Khan. Kukla Khan. It's basically like uh, the, the Home Alone kid. Macaulay Culkin? Close. Very close. Macaulay Culkin? Kukla Khan. We're going to check out the video, the reveal of Kukla Khan, guys. Run it away, production. <laughs> 